Today, NVIDIA gave creators superpowers, basically. I wasn't really expecting to make a video today, and I don't normally make videos on just newsy topics unless it's part of my news show, but that's a week away, and I really wanted to talk about this stuff. We're just going to jump in. This video is not sponsored, no matter how much it seems like I'm focusing on, you know, the one obvious company or what have you. But there are a lot of NVIDIA updates that came out today, both in driver form, software release form, product teaser form that bring a lot to content creators. First and foremost, because I think this will excite the most people with the latest NVIDIA driver that just released today, April 16th, 2020, you can now have up to three NVENC sessions going at one time. Previously, it was driver limited to two and there were workarounds to basically mod the driver to allow for more, but you know, whatever. This is now officially supported. They have unlocked it up to three, which means you can do different things like have recording and streaming in OBS running as well as another app using OBS. You should have less conflicts with video editing apps while editing or while recording and streaming in OBS. You can unlock it for Plex sessions. This has been a big deal for Plex. People unlock the driver so they can stream a lot more Plex streams. You now have more available. So if you are using hardware transcoding in Plex's settings, then now you have more streams available, which is really powerful. If you're running video encoding scripts and you want it to pass through, you know, compressing your footage archive and do more than one at a time, you can now do up to three at once. Lots of cool stuff there. This isn't like officially announced, but that is something I can 100% confirm is in the latest driver update. But secondly, they have also released a beta of the RTX noise removal software. So back at TwitchCon last year, and or, or at least around that time, NVIDIA had teased a bunch of new software coming from the RTX Broadcast Studio, I think it's called, where you have a bunch of different video effects and audio effects. This is one of them. It's AI trained noise removal. So they put it through, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hours of training to make sure that it locks onto a speaker's voice and only focuses on that and removes a lot of background noise. And this is releasing at the same time as a new noise removal software has just been introduced into Discord and people have been using it for Zoom and things like that called Crisp. Crisp costs money and still affects your voice. Like it will, it does a surprisingly good job of removing background sounds, background noise, things like that, but it still makes your voice kind of tinny and things like that. Uh, setting up the RTX broadcast so or the RTX noise removal software doesn't. It just doesn't. It, your, your voice still sounds the same. It removed keyboard sounds, uh, vacuum sounds, things like that. To set it up, you need to download the installer. And then this, the cool thing about this is it will work on incoming chat sound as well, or your voice, you know, and your voice. Now, there is a slight performance penalty. This only runs on RTX cards. So anything with tensor cores in it, because it uses those extra magic cores. They're not magic, but you know, those extra cores that everyone said was pointless. It's using those to perform the noise removal process. And so you select, you open up the app, you select your input device, which is your microphone. Then you select your output device if you also want to filter that. And then you check the box for which one you want filtered and you can change that on the fly. There's also a slider for how intense the noise removal is. And once you've set up the AI noise removal settings, then in your recording or streaming program, such as Zoom, OBS, what have you, you change your audio device from your normal microphone to the one listed as NVIDIA RTX microphone and then it uses that. If you still use your normal microphone, then it's not going to have the noise removal process there. This is useful for a couple situations. Obviously, if you have a noisy microphone yourself and you want to reduce some of that background noise, if you know there's a lot going on, you can reduce some of that. But also, if you have people in your Discord call and your Zoom call and your meeting, whatever, that just have really obnoxious, ear annoying sounds in their background, you can remove that for them which is pretty cool if you're having guest interviews, things like that. This obviously doesn't replace an actual like studio function, you know, noise treatment of your environment. But if you do have some, a guest or someone that you're bringing on or recording a, you know, a group game session and someone just has a really annoying background sound, you can filter that out without needing to make them do anything, which is pretty cool. Uh, uh, while you're gaming, you may notice a performance impact if you're running both at once. Running just the microphone one, uh, should you should see between a 4 to 10% performance impact on your game, which is a lot for some people. Depending on your graphics card, what game you're running, things like that, you may not notice it at all. And then if you're running both, you could see as high as like 25% performance impact. So that's unfortunate. I'm going to play some samples and comparisons to Crisp here real quick. This is a test with what my microphone normally sounds like running through the Go XLR with the noise gate on. This is a test of what my microphone normally sounds like running through the Go XLR with the noise gate off. You can probably hear a little bit more background noise, and if I open my computer's panel, 
Introducing some background noise, things like that. I'm gonna start typing. Typing on my Cherry MX Blue keyboard switches. Typing, typing, typing. You get some background noise. It may not be significant because I'm on the SM7B, which already rejects stuff a lot, but it's there. Now this is a test of my microphone running through the Go XLR. Noise gate still disabled, but I have NVIDIA's AI noise suppression enabled. The, com the panel on my computer is open, so that fan noise is going. I'm gonna start typing on my Cherry MX Blue keyboard. Talking while typing. Talking while typing. Talking. I'm gonna do something. This is on 100% full bore, by the way. You have a total, you have a slider for total control. So if I back it off to 50%, this is about 40%. Test, test. Still picks up a little bit of the keyboards. And if I back it all the way down to 0%, then you're gonna hear the room noise again. And I'm gonna kick it back up to 100%. Here's a vacuum. The vacuum is running. The vacuum is running, the vacuum is running, the vacuum is running, the vacuum is running. The vacuum is running, the vacuum is running. All right, now this is a test with the same setup, but using crisp audio, which has just recently come out. It costs money for the most part, and from what I hear, the results are a little bit more tinny. I still have my computer fans making noise. I'm going to do a talking while typing test. So I'm talking while typing, typing without talking. Talking while typing, talking while typing, talking while typing. And this is my vacuum. Talking with the vacuum on, talking with the vacuum on, talking with the vacuum on, talking with the vacuum. Vacuum. Talking, talking, testing, talking, talking, testing. <laughs> Interesting. And all that being said, currently this is handled through this AI noise removal app and it adds it as a separate Windows device. And this does actually increase the latency to maybe 10 milliseconds or so according to someone, but you know, I don't have hard numbers on that just yet. But I can already confirm that someone is at least toying with the idea and tinkering with the idea of building it as a VST filter. Now, this would mean that you could add it as a filter to an existing audio device in OBS Studio or your live streaming app, but it could also be used in post in editing to help clean up audio after the fact, which would be really, really cool. There's already an SDK for it, so I'm hoping that this VST comes to light because that would make it extremely powerful, more so than it already is. Like this thing works like magic, cutting out my vacuum, my keyboard sounds. You don't have to hear my keyboard. Obviously, you still hear stuff some stuff while you're talking, but you don't hear it when you're not talking at all, which is pretty crazy. Next up, uh, there is a beta in the Adobe Creative Cloud client for Premiere Pro, which finally adds hardware encoding support. Now, this just isn't just NVIDIA. This is NVIDIA and AMD, but both NVENC and AMF for AMD users is now supported in this Premiere Pro beta for H.264 and HEVC output. So you choose when you're handling your export settings, you choose the H.264 codec, and then in that box where previously it was only available for Intel iGPU users who had Intel QuickSync, you can now choose hardware encoding and you don't have any extra options for it. It doesn't make it very obvious what it's doing, but I checked Task Manager with the export. It was using the InVenc encoding engine and same thing with AMDs. And so now you have that GPU encoding available, which could see export times from Premiere Pro as high as two to four times faster than what you were previously running for H.264 exports, which is insane. It's also about ding time because Adobe should have implemented this like five years ago. So the fact that it took them this long is extremely disappointing, but the fact that it's finally here is very exciting. I know that's bringing a lot of people back to Premiere. That's one of the advantages that a lot of people saw in DaVinci Resolve. To me, the actual timeline performance is still so significantly different and the color grading experience is so much better on Resolve. Like if I take my cinema camera raw footage and apply the exact same like LUT from Resolve and Premiere, I get two completely different results. And then I have to figure out how to compensate for that in Premiere. And I just don't want to mess with that. So a lot of my like this video is probably going to be edited in Premiere just so I can use it again. But most of my like formal videos will be edited in Resolve regardless. But this is still really, really cool. And you can download it through the beta apps if you have that available in your Creative Cloud client. They're kind of rolling it out at random. It's under categories, beta apps, and then you can install the Premiere Pro beta. It runs separate from normal Premiere Pro. 
but it, it runs very, very fast, and I haven't noticed any issues with it. It should also increase general timeline performance as well, because it's using more of those GPU-based video decoders as well. Also, the Premiere update has fixed the issue with importing OBS recordings. This has been an issue for all of CC 2020's life so far. People complain about it constantly. It either freezes or crashes or takes forever importing OBS files. That has been fixed with this latest Premiere Pro update, the public one, not even just the beta, but the public one as well. We also got another piece of that RTX studio, broadcast studio package in the form of an AR camera tracker. Uh, this is available in the Stream FX plugin from Zamar, which has those cool encoders that I use for ProRes and HEVC and a bunch of cool effects. Uh, you can find that linked in the video description. It has some cool effects. I haven't messed with it a ton yet, but it is pretty exciting regardless. Uh, last couple notes real quick. HP has announced their new ZBook Create and Studio, which are incredibly powerful uh, RTX Studio laptops. Having made my trek to CES with a 17 inch, like eight pound laptop, that was my only real video editing laptop and dealt with that absolute nightmare. I've, I've been very much on the mark in the market for a smaller, thinner, lighter laptop that can do all the same video editing processes. So all of these new RTX studio laptops greatly appeal to me and these new HP ones, I reviewed a ZBook quite a while back, like a few years ago, and I greatly enjoyed it. So seeing this one, I'm very stoked. I can hope I can only hope I can get my hands on one at some point next time I travel, whenever that might be 2022, maybe, <laughs> but looks pretty cool. And then of course, Minecraft RTX finally released today. So if you use the Windows 10 Bedrock Edition of Minecraft, unfortunately not the Java one, you can play Minecraft RTX and Digital Foundry has a cool map that they use to showcase it with a cool camera setting and things like that. It is real light in a video game, really freaking cool stuff. Just wanted to update you guys. Most of this is creator focused. This is just what I wanted to talk about. The noise removal thing. I spent quite a bit of time today testing with the Discord call and with direct microphone and things like that. Really exciting stuff. And those of you who want more Invink sessions, it has now been given to you. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more stream guides. I'm your host, Epos Fox, stream professor. I don't know why I called myself a host. I don't normally do that. Go subscribe on Flow Playing. Go follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Stream Guides and Stream underscore Guides. I'll have those linked in the video description. And go to streamtheory.gg slash sign up to get prepared for my new course. It's going to be pretty bonkers. I'll see you next time.